Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining in the plenary panel uh, of uh, Horasis Asia meeting. Uh, the title of this plenary panel is to exploring investment to accelerate Indonesia's agendas in dealing with the climate crisis. So in this uh, panel today, I will be your chair in here. My name is Lipan. I'm from Indonesia. I'm the director of AIM Group. Uh, we have experience uh, in the renewable energy and environmental field in the past uh, years. And it is a great honor uh, for me to welcome uh, distinguished uh, speakers today uh, coming from uh, Indonesia. We have in here uh, Bapak Fadli Samsudin, who is the Ocean and Fisheries Department uh, of West Sulawesi uh, in Indonesia. And, and for your information, West Sulawesi was, was, was he is one of the newest province in Indonesia. So it's a really quite exciting to see how things are developing in that part of Indonesia. You to see what are the needs uh, that uh, the other region have when it comes to uh, uh, and how they able to adapt with the, uh, the, the, the carbon emission reduction target uh, in 2060. And we will, I believe we can have a lot of uh, interesting insight from uh, Fadli regarding to this. And we also in here uh, have uh, Pak Darwin uh, Tisna Winata uh, from PT Sarana Multi Infrastructure Indonesia. Welcome, uh, Pak Darwin. Uh, and thank you. Uh, so. Uh, and I believe you play a very important role uh, in, in Indonesia to also accelerate the carbon uh, emission reduction, uh, also in terms, in terms from the point of view of climate change uh, financing. And uh, we also in here have uh, Mr. Uh, Akai Sang, uh, uh, Mr. Akai, the director of GFR Co Limited, uh, accompanied by his colleagues. Uh, uh, so I believe uh, he's also representing from Japan and also representing uh, the effort from Japan for, uh, you know, pursuing the carbon emission reduction uh, uh, and from the technological point of view. So I guess maybe we can hear some insights from this uh, slide about what uh, kind of uh, technology uh, that uh, we need to uh, uh, pay uh, attention when it comes to solving the climate crisis. But before uh, going to that, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, send some announcement. Uh, previously, this uh, session was prepared by my colleague, uh, Mr. Farah Hermi from the uh, Tamrin School for Sustainability and uh, Climate Change. But unfortunately, because of his health condition, he cannot uh, become the chair. So he asked me to replace him uh, on this uh, panel to become the chair. So I hope that I can uh, deliver uh, the chair, chair uh, uh, as well as he can. Uh, so, uh, uh, so let's uh, try to move forward with the discussion. Before uh, we go into each and each speaker, uh, some remarks, uh, very short, uh, some kind of guidance for today. Uh, so, and it's actually going to help me. Uh. So, what resulted from the strong in 26 known as the go package? Uh, although consumers are forward, there are many who think that the various commitments are not uh, according uh, in accordance with the framework of fulfilling the goals of the Paris Agreement. The goal of achieving temperature in the range of 1.5 degrees under the agreement by halving global emissions by 2020 and net So there's an emission gap report published by uh, United Nations Environmental Program in 2021 shows that the global aggregate and improvement in the emission of various countries is still at 2.7 degrees at the end of this century. So it's still very far from the 1.5 degrees that we need to achieve. So without a progressive breakthrough involving all actors, state and non-state actors, life on earth will face the impact of the climate. At the national level in the past, or the state national development planning ministry report, the climate research and development in 2021 shows that there are about uh, 52 million people, you can imagine, 52 million people who are vulnerable, or almost the same population as South Korea, who are, uh, who are vulnerable and will be affected by climate change, especially in the various coastal areas. So I think uh, it's interesting, maybe in here we can discuss uh, West Sulawesi also because they are also uh, exposed to the coastal area. So therefore, perhaps one of the most important propos proposals for an Indonesian country like Indonesia is to focus on adaptation efforts while waiting for global commitments whose negotiating are still ongoing, but we hope this can be good first. So in this context, that various bilateral support and international cooperation are placed, various funding and investment needs to be elaborated in this effort. So what, is your, what are your views on the challenges by after 2030? 
Ability that the Indonesian government efforts should focus in investing areas identified by the governments as vulnerable, or what kind of bilateral funding and investment should be developed? A special funding scheme. So, so that's why I would like to uh, give the floor first to Mr. Fadli Samsudin uh, from West Sulawesi Province. So, as one of the newest province in Indonesia. Family, how do you plan for the economic growth in your province and, and also making sure that the economic growth can also comply with the Paris Agreement and to achieve net zero carbon emission in 2060, in particular uh, related to your uh, sector, which is the ocean and fishing. So first, I would like to give the chance to Pak Fadli. Over to you, Pak Fadli from West Sulawesi. Thank you so much, Chairman. And also for the, all the speakers here, the panel. Uh, with this very important opportunity, especially for us, is uh, one of the youngest province in Indonesia. And we look at that uh, our province is uh, actually very important in terms of the climate change because, you know, Makassar Strait is one of the most important uh, channels, a uh, strait, yeah, uh, exporting, exporting hot. Uh, water masses from the Pacific to Indian Ocean, part of the global thermohaline circulation. So this is why uh, many uh, renowned scientists in the world uh, with Indonesia in collaborating to conduct a research to put some measurements to, uh, for the global climate change with US and any uh, Japan and also in any many country. So in terms of this, actually, uh, we can say that uh, Indonesia, especially in this province, is very important to understand the climate change, especially how to monitor these changes. And we, especially in the government, in the local governments, uh, uh, very much uh, support yeah, from government uh, uh, levels that uh, since the last, I think, decades, uh, our former, uh, former presidents, uh, Bambang Yudono, you know, and Indonesia has a commitment after the Paris Agreement actually to reduce the uh, gas uh, carbon uh, emissions. And actually, uh, local government here uh, also uh, translates the program, but very much actually, uh, say again, in, in this West, Pro West uh, Sulawesi province, we have one of the most uh, Stay like uh, the second longest uh, coral reef in the world after the Red Meru Reef. Uh, we call it this uh, Bal Balakan Island. This is in the center of the uh, Makassar Strait with the uh, 330 uh, kilometers uh, length of the coral. And we try with our program, we put the funding actually to restore this kind of coral. And also, uh, since last two years, yeah, until now. Uh, we consult this region actually with uh, many programs and also as part of our uh, commitment to the uh, government, uh, government. And for our program itself in the, uh, in the DKP, I mean in the marine and uh, fisheries affairs, we put actually empowerment like a community development of these uh, people living in this uh, small island. So in the Balabalakang Island, they have uh, 14 uh, small islands and with this uh, consultation. So we actually develop the people, how they are uh, adapting the climate, yeah, the climate change actually. And along the coast in our province, we have uh, say like a 677 uh, kilometers coastal length uh, along the province uh, uh, from the north to the south in the Makassar Strait. We have a mangrove. And with our program, uh, we put uh, uh, quite a big funding actually in terms of our local uh, fundings. Uh, we put uh, what we call a uh, silver fishery. So, silver fishery, like uh, we put, uh, we rehab, rehab, we make a rehabilitation of the mangrove and put some like a uh, uh, crab. Yeah, we put a crab there and try to empower the people living in the, uh, which we know is uh, normally structural is uh, poor and also some problem with the uh, national. And we, in this new province, is uh, number two in Indonesia with the stunting. Actually. So we really engage very much with this kind of program to reduce the 
carbon uh, uh, carbon uh, emissions through this kind of like a program through uh, conser conservation and also uh, restore the coral reef and we have rehabilitation with the mango. So we believe this kind of like efforts in the coming years will have significant impact actually in terms of what so called uh, reducing this uh, 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 like a uh, name here with the COP26. I think that's all for us. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Farli. It's really interesting to understand about the uh, situation in West Sulawesi, considering uh, it's one of the newest province in Indonesia. And it's really, uh, 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 I'm happy to hear that uh, the concentration or the uh, interest to uh, put attention on the uh, carbon emission reduction effort is already there. And also acknowledging some very key uh, geographical location uh, that maybe can be come up a place where the effect of the climate change can be really visible. So I guess the urgency to put those places uh, as uh, you know as a place where we need to do some concrete climate action uh, is also important. So I think when it comes to action, I think it's uh, interesting if we can jump over to Pak Darwin uh, 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 Trishna Jaiwinata from uh, uh, Sarnam Infrastructure, uh, the CFO uh, of the company. Uh, uh, so, uh, and I believe you have a lot of exposures uh, trying to uh, understand the situation in the regional part of Indonesia and to see what kind of uh, uh, needs uh, that they have, uh, and how actually you as the uh, uh, institute, uh, as the company from the Ministry of Finance to really push the uh, uh, capital deployment and investment in the climate change, especially. Uh, so I would like to know. Uh, so we know that you have been uh, done uh, quite a lot uh, in the past uh, to really help the regional part of Indonesia for the economic growth by deploying the investment and 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 uh, cap and financing, but. Uh, based on your understanding, uh, uh, especially uh, before and after COP26, so what do you th see actually uh, the outcome that can be uh, uh, that can be important or, or related to the effort of uh, facing the climate crisis in terms of the financing point of view? Do you see that there there's going to be a change uh, or already a change uh, coming? towards uh, facing the climate uh, crisis from the COP26 and, and what are the remaining challenges? And here uh, we have the representative from the local government, so we'd like to know like what should the local government and international players should understand uh, to participate in the Indonesian economic growth while dealing with the Indian climate crisis? What do you think are the still uh, uh, chal uh, the remaining challenges that you still face when it comes for you to address opportunities in the regional part of Indonesia? So maybe in this opportunity, maybe we can, you can try to address uh, from the financing point of view before we move over to Japan to hear from uh, what they can share to, to the uh, audience today. Thank you very much. So over to you, Pa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, very good afternoon, very good evening for all the participants who have been here. Uh, for some thank you very much for inviting us into this forum. Uh, prior to share uh, what I will be our view with regards to your question, allow me to provide you with the illustration, the illustration with regards to our benefits. It is a multi infrastructure and uh, financing company. And we are in the process to develop financial tokens. So the DMI can be quite familiar with other financial institutions that focus to support the development of certain areas, certain areas, certain aspects of that will need some uh, intervention from the government. So we have been established as the non-bank financial institution. We are the SOEs. Uh, we have a flexibility and independence in terms of managing the fund that we manage. And with that, I think our intervention can be in, in, in a certain area. First, we have to the financing and investment focus. And the second part to the what we call the advisory to help the uh, in coming the issues of the implementation required prior to the financing and helping to uh, navigate the investors and vendors to participate in financing the opportunities in, in, in Indonesia. The third areas that we support is on the project development, which we are providing support and assistance to the government. Can we look at the government can, can, in preparing the project in which the project can be, be offered to the private sector so that 
can invest those people. Let them who are in the friendship. With regard to your question, I think the OP26 is probably has already provided some, uh, some results from the discussion. It's still aligned with our uh, uh, efforts so far. As you mentioned, in the past, we are really focused on supporting the, in, the, in, the, in the Indonesian promotion of the clean energy funding financing in which PTMI is there, we established the financial division to focus on the renewable energy efficiency. Not only that, we also focus on what we call it, the uh, regional uh, thing that we, yeah. we try to support to the local government in the, local, in the way that local government would like to establish it. In the way that we are trying to we promote public discipline for sure. In which the environment and social is becoming a key aspect, we will measure and then we will ensure that they will be uh, applied by our recipients, including the local government. And to add on this environmental social, I think the certain elements of the climate change is actually becoming our key parameters that should be measured from the financing or investment that we make. So I think. Uh, the climate change is becoming very, very, pretty uh, strategic in our view. So in terms of the financing, that's what we are trying to promote to uh, Indonesian recipients. On the funding, to do this financing, we also do, need to do the fundraising. We are actually trying to improve the international uh, experience or standards in regards to the funding practices. For example, on the green bonds, so we try to adopt the international standard for the green bond issue, and we are now becoming the first issuer of the green bond in Indonesia domestic. We are about to see the opportunity to uh, issue the, uh, another green bond in the next year. So that's probably what are the efforts that we are taking to ensure that the funding commitment from the international community from investors can be applied and be channeled to Indonesian communities. Uh, not only doing the uh, bond issuance, but we are also working together with the Climate Fund. So we are becoming the credit entity of the Green Climate Fund, a uh, global commitment on the financing of this climate change. So we are the accreditation process to improve accreditation. See, we are the A rating of the uh, A rating. Uh, of this accreditation, so it will allow us to to attract more money from the com international global uh, from the global commitment that can be channeled to the Indonesian infrastructure or Indonesia in the change project. I think that's what now we also managing some uh, uh, facility from the international multilateral. Of a bilateral agency in helping this. So that's something that we will continue because if we see what uh, what actually really needed for such investment in the climate change project, first is to bring the awareness. On the, to bring the awareness, kind of the promotion capacity building is required. This only can be helped through the provision of technical assistance. It fully can be provided by our international partners. It can, it can be coming from the different agencies. That's something that we are working on. And the second one is on the on project development in terms of preparing the project documents. Because for 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 certain reason, Indonesia still relatively new. Looking on how to prepare the project that can be considered a bankable that can be accessed to the financier. So the project development part can be provided by the technical assistance support. So that we are also working together with our international partners. So some of the projects have already received this work. Not only uh, in the project development, once the project is quite ready in terms of the financing, we still see some risk has not been mitigated yet, so I think the best thing is to So that's why uh, we have to provide those kind of existing products. The existing product is a from the form of guarantee and 
of the construction alone, the SMI working together with our partner to provide those helping to project, helping for the project to mitigate those risks and once the bank, it, it can be with the bankable project. So then it can come to the, the uh, next project for them. So once the project is constructed in such a way and has the bankability, I think the commercial financier can participate into this project. So that's probably the main role that we have in uh, in supporting the uh, the agenda of climate change uh, mitigations on through the investment financing in, in mitigation. It also happened to the uh, uh, regional project, the local government project. That's why we are also doing the things. So with that, I think what we do now is actually we are we are creating what we call the blended platform, a blended finance platform, the SDG Indonesia one that attracts some of our partners to, to get up on that. The partner is seeking for the leverage participation in that project so that we can read to also share to the investor participating in the type of project and that will be fully recognized in terms of the participation of the uh, uh, contribution-wise, you can see as the entity who actually focus and commit to 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 to, to this this climate project will be the twenty six part. I think the same, but there will be some competition because previously we the dairy thing product for example, on, the, on the provision of the support or other but in the COP26 I think the measure could be taken especially in the area of energy transition in the case of the carbon reduction uh, so Indonesia I believe will be more uh, actually uh, 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 in I mean, all this will be more integrated, more money picking, and will be more focused on the product development. And just to scale up, this this will be happen in the next. Taking the opportunity of the nation becoming the presidency of the G20, lot of collaboration will come together with the developed countries. So I think this is the opportunity for Indonesia to take the opportunity together with the scale developed countries. Because uh, we receive so many commitments from our development country partners that they can provide those parts of the everything as well as the contribution. So I think that's probably the, the, the situation that we see following this COVID-26. More commitments, one thing, the, commitment, the, the, the other thing is on the uh, detailed product supporting the, the process of uh, Patients, <laughs> or probably in the in in in, in the areas of climate mitigation. That's for me, Ma, uh, Mr. Chen, and over to you. Thank you very much and very, very insightful, elaborative, and I think we get really an overall picture of the situation that uh, we uh, that we can see from the financing perspective. I think uh, the, the institutional framework is sort of uh, going into the right direction. Uh, uh, to really, you know, bring this uh, climate financing uh, to the right uh, uh, targets uh, and the right uh, proponent in Indonesia. Um, I think uh, maybe we would like to go over to Japan, uh, uh, going to, uh, like to hear more from Akaisa. Maybe we can hear more from your experience, uh, especially from the Japan's experience. How do actually uh, uh, the uh, the dev, uh, how how does actually uh, the experience from the developed uh, uh, technology from the developed country uh, on facing the climate crisis. Uh, how how can we? Uh, uh, what support actually does Japanese government provide to company like yours? And what Indonesia can learn from that experience? What is your opinion that developed countries should provide more support to developing countries in facing climate crisis? And how should they do it? And maybe uh, you can also talk about uh, what. Uh, actually, a kind of technological uh, solution that uh, that can be very important to solve this climate crisis 
uh, because in here you have the place which is West Sulawesi and you have the financing which is from the SMI. So, and we have you as the technology provider. So please uh, kindly share about what <laughs> that you can provide uh, for this climate crisis. Thank you. Over to you, Akai Sang, and your colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you, Chair, Mr. Chairman. So, and uh, two panelists. And uh, this is a great opportunity for our company, JFR. And just like West Strategy, our company, JFR, is a relatively new uh, company. And uh, we are uh, science based uh, companies. Then uh, we are solution provider for uh, climate uh, change. So we have various uh, technologies to uh, fight with climate change. Then, uh, you know, first, I want to introduce that we are kind of you know, the new company based in Japan. However, the gentleman next to me, and he's the Dr. Terashima. He's an international businessman uh, who has a network in uh, especially in the UK and the Europe, and uh, doing international business. And next to me, uh, Mr. Miyazaki, and uh, he's uh, our JFR chairman, I mean, the uh, chief executive. And uh, his background is uh, chemical. And uh, we uh, know this uh, carbon, uh, uh, you know, carbon trade and uh, uh, methane and uh, those, uh, you know, the uh, fighting with those things will be uh, very much to do with uh, chemicals. So you know, we need to explain about what we can provide for uh, fighting with this climate change. And <coughs> And I think this West of Australia, this is very beautiful place with uh, agriculture and uh, fishing and uh, this marine resort. And uh, this is very, uh, really uh, beautiful place with uh, the uh, marine uh, sports like diving. And the water pollution could be uh, one risk we have to fight with. And, uh, we can provide to clean uh, water and uh, keeping uh, the uh, sea clean. Uh, with uh, so sewage uh, management, and we can provide such as a, uh, the, uh, this is a product we can provide. This is called uh, porous. This is porous can be uh, the uh, how do you say uh, absorb is uh, like uh, phosphorus or nitrogen, and also the carbon nutrition. Uh, those things uh, can be uh, fighting with uh, its uh, materials. So you can provide. However, you know, one thing we have big pro uh, problem with the uh, infrastructure uh, things. That's, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Darwin company can, you know, as he explained, I think infrastructure, uh, the, I think, because we have to uh, socially implement. Because this is just a technology, but uh, we have to actually socially Im uh, implement. Without implementation, yeah, we cannot actually reduce uh, the CO2, or we cannot fight with such uh, climate uh, issues. So we have to uh, provide such technology and uh, to make <coughs> things happen. And this, our company, JFR, can do uh, really uh, provide such technology and make things happen. Because background, you know, we are just, uh, as I said, new company, uh, JFR, however, uh, we are working with various uh, national universities in Japan. Those technologies are quite cutting edge technology fighting with climate. Then, you know, this technology we can actually uh, provide through our company because we are a platform company. Then, uh, you know, the, all things happening in Japanese science. Those are the new technologies. Uh, you know, the various national universities has a, uh, uh, you know, many technologies uh, can provide. Then we really want to make it happen uh, in uh, Indonesia, especially you know, taking this opportunity. We now know about the West Sulawesi. That is a great opportunity for us. So we may be able to come to your place and do some such uh, feasibility study. Then we can. Uh, <coughs> to uh, which technology is best for the area. Because without such study, we cannot actually judge it today. But the thing that happened, and like uh, you know, Mr. Darwin said, this COP COP26 made uh, this very high, uh, very challenging goal already set. And we have to really take action as soon as possible. And uh, the, this 2030 and the 2050, there are many goals. But uh, it's really just <laughs> The thing is just coming. And uh, we are, the, uh, as I said, solution provider. So we are very much ready to uh, you know, cooperate to Indonesia 
to uh, make uh, you know uh, country uh, to a better uh, solution and uh, fight this climate crisis. That's the answer uh, to the question. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much, Akasa. I think in the next round, I will try to explore more about uh, uh, how uh, the technology <coughs> role, uh, can be played uh, uh, to uh, overcome the climate crisis. So that's why I would like to go over again to Pak Fadli, uh, coming from the West Sulawesi, especially from the ocean and fishery sector. What do you think uh, the kind of technology that is uh, required, uh, uh, especially in the situation that you are having now, uh, in order for us to able to, uh, you know, solve this uh, climate crisis, what, what do you see the actual problems that you are facing right now in the field of, especially the ocean and fisheries, especially in the Maybe you can address those uh, challenges uh, and and what do you think the technology uh, needs uh, to solve the problem, uh, so that maybe we can understand uh, from that point of view on how we can bring the right technology and what kind of financing, for example, that we can uh, that we can. Uh, that we should make uh, to solve that problem. So maybe, Pak Fadi, you can share more about the, what is the requirement or what is your need right now when it comes to uh, uh, yeah. solving with the technology, uh, solving climate crisis with the technology. Th thank you so much, Chairman. Actually, I have, uh, I, I show you already uh, our uh, program, what we call it uh, into, uh, integrated uh, uh, silpo fishery. Yeah, with wind energy in form of developing the aquacultures uh, and marine cultures together uh, as one of the integrated system uh, in order for us uh, in the uh, uh, marine uh, in the in the uh, uh, fishery sectors yeah uh, we can gain uh, a lot to help people uh, living uh, surrounding the coastal regions. So community development, yes, of this. And through this kind of a program with the, the carbon uh, uh, reductions, so with the silk of fishery, uh, we need this uh, together with the wind energy. So we call it this like a green technology. We, we, we need this kind of technology at the moment. So actually the concept is, uh, is still uh, uh, starting uh, to implement in this coming year very soon. So we put uh, several uh, regions in West Sulawesi. Uh, for example, we have uh, five regions actually uh, from the six yeah, in the province. And uh, we start things from the northern parts in the Pasangkayu, yeah, near central Sulawesi, to put this kind of like a silk of fishery. And they're going down to to uh, other uh, region like in uh, Mamu, uh, central Mamuju. And this kind of like, uh, we need actually, uh, as I mentioned previously, 677 kilometers uh, coastal lines is quite huge. So the energy we need actually uh, also. Uh, actually. So if we can collaborate yeah, in terms of the financial uh, 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 support or collaboration with local government, with us. So I think we can achieve this kind of a goal. So we can help people, yeah, especially with the uh, community, community development program, both in, uh, along the coastal region and also in the remote islands of Balabalaka with uh, the program of conservation. So we need also the can uh, energy uh, wind energy together uh, besides also the the waters as well as our big problem yeah uh, in the remote area uh, because this is quite small island so uh, waters uh, for drinking actually yeah, problem so i think i think uh, we need the green technology and in terms of the ocean uh, actually uh, from the uh, ministry of uh, 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 marine and fisheries affairs yeah the, in the in the ministerial levels they have a program with the uh, they try to push yeah the blue economics program and we we try also to implement this so green technology along the coastal regions yeah, with the integrated program 
to the Silco Pistri, to have the mango, and also uh, Aqua and Marine Cultures put together with the wind energy, and community development also in the in the remote islands like in Balabalaprang Island for uh, restoration uh, of the coral reef and also conservation. I think I think that's all that's really needed needed uh, in the emerging needs. Yeah, I mean. Uh, in the in the near futures for West Sulawesi province, right. so I think we can collaborate. Right. Thank you, Pak Farli. So uh, maybe I would like to hear your opinion, Pak Darwin. Uh, what is your uh, perspective related to the ocean and fisheries sector? Uh, because as we know that the you know in terms of the impact of the climate change, you know ocean and fisheries are the ones that uh, can be actually one of the most uh, highly affected. Uh, uh, field uh, when it comes to the climate change, right? So, uh, but I know that it's not easy uh, to provide financing or investment in this sector right? uh, because maybe of the readiness, the awareness, and the capacity. Uh, but what is your overview, uh, Pak Darwin, about this sector? Because I know that Indonesia is really enriched in this uh, uh, ocean and fishery sector, but it's less developed uh, compared to maybe other sectors in general. So, uh, how do you address uh, this situation and what is your thought on it? Thank you, Mr. Uh, to be frank, I think the uh, ocean and fisheries is relatively new areas for us. So we have not been there so far. We have not been exposed to the uh, ocean and fisheries so far. But except on the infrastructure, so we actually should be part of the port development, for example, we should be the area renewable energy. Development to support the fisheries population. That's something that we can we can. What I see with the ocean fisheries crisis, I think that I I totally agree with your statement that ocean and fisheries is being impacted by the intervention. I think to be addressed because we haven't from the main perspective I think several areas we can support in the context of the recovery in the sectors that's something that was and then probably we can then establish in terms of the product but very crucial part of those equation is basically how to establish the business model planning of the financing will become a only if so we see the the, the role this model is in this this model but we also need to take hold the contract from those the development is actually can 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 represent the appetite from the financier as well. So I think the contract should be there. The, uh, the reputations of the uh, parties involved is uh, become important because the lenders of the financier would like to see that actually that, that element is actually being fulfilled by by by, by, by those those those. So that's probably what I can share. The important is on ocean fisheries is the role of the local government. So I think the local government, not only from the policy in point of view, but they also touch the certain element of those investment. For example, if needed, from the local government must invest certain portion of the infrastructures in which those infrastructures have to be covered by the, 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 the investment coming from the commercial institution. So, right. I think uh, we, we from PTSMI is willing to support the uh, initiative, but again, the issue is now is how we can start to establish the business model. Right. Yes, thank you, Pak Darwin. So over to Kaisang. So in the, of course, related to ocean fisheries and the climate change affected uh, from the region, 
for that part, I think uh, the technology related to the water is uh, important, uh, and we need to make sure that we have the right technology, uh, uh, you know, for the ocean and fisheries uh, sector, uh, especially related to the water. So maybe you can elaborate more of what kind of uh, technology related to the water yeah. can very important needs to be uh, awareness for us in here. Okay, so thank you. So the, you know, the basically speaking, you know, so what I uh, mentioned is uh, you know, something to do with uh, so-called circular economy. So mm. people are living in the island and the people are, you know, the consume. And you know, the, also we have to fight uh, with uh, climate change. So you know, people, you know, have to live. So, you know, have to really work. And you know, when it's coming out of uh, daily life. So, you know, recycling or you know, the reuse or you know those uh, will be very important uh, things. And thankfully, you know, the we I um, mean the in Japan the recycling idea is quite uh, updated and quite uh, you know, now uh, you know quite usual thing. And we can be uh, you know transfer such uh, things together with cutting with cutting edge technologies. That's what uh, we are trying to do in JFR company. So because without such new technologies, this high goal cannot be achieved. So you know, this international cooperation with uh, Japan, Indonesia, that would be very uh, you know, ideal uh, partnership because we have some uh, technology and some ideas. Then uh, people in Indonesia uh, need such uh, technology that would be really you know, quite uh, you know, uh, matching uh, the, uh, in a, a higher stage. But uh, as you mentioned, this financing will be uh, something different. So we really need some cooperation from local government, national government, and uh, including uh, Japanese government. Then uh, we luckily have uh, some uh, connection to the national university, as I mentioned, and uh, through them, uh, Japanese government will be uh, uh, not uh, far uh, you know, people. Uh, like, you know, uh, Dr. Terashima next to me has a connection to the uh, political related people. So we may be able to create a uh, good project uh, after we see more about a uh, uh, specific program, uh, you know, uh, West Strategy or other area may have such a uh, program. Like, uh, as far as we, we, we study in Japan, that's like, you know, green, blue, or or, you know, those are common problems and uh, we can be uh, sorted such program, then uh, Indonesia is a full, free reach of uh, sea infrastructure and uh, sea uh, resources, uh, ocean resources that can be utilized to uh, you know, the uh, further development of Indonesia for 250 uh, million people have to really live nicely. That's, uh, we are very much uh, ready to uh, cooperate and uh, support uh, for further development. Thank you very much, Akasha. So, we have, uh, uh, I think, a uh, guest from the uh, State of Development Planning, uh, Ibu Angi, who might maybe would like to give some comments about the discussion today. So, we touch upon uh, the regional government situation and the financial situation, and also there's a technological element in here. Uh, so, what, what is your, uh, maybe have some comments about this issue, like uh, how the planning uh, can play an aspect, and I think it's, uh, it is uh, very important to understand more that the importance of planning to make sure that we can have a uh, feasible plan uh, to deliver projects related to the, uh, respond to the climate crisis. So, over to you, maybe, uh, uh, for brief, uh, Ibu Angi. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh... Uh, for the opportunity, uh, Mr. Ivan. Greetings, Pak Darwin, uh, Mr. Nobu, uh, Pak Fadli. Nice to meet you all. I'm Angi from Environmental Affairs. No, thank you. Pardon? Yeah, no, 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 it is very difficult to pronounce, so call me Akai. Akai may be oh, okay. very <laughs> Okay, nice to, nice to meet you, Mr. Akai. Um, yeah. My name is Angi. I'm a planner in Environmental Affairs Directorate of uh, Ministry of National Planning and Development Governance. Um, I've just joined 10 minutes ago, and maybe I would like in this moment to also emphasize that in the planning side where um, institution is, um, we handle the, uh, the the planning and budgeting side, uh, we, we already put the 
the climate crisis as one of the na national priority agenda in our national midterm 2020 until 2024. So we have a national priority uh, on building the environment and enhancing uh, the climate resilience and low carbon. And there uh, we have such prog uh, two program priority more related on the uh, climate uh, change in the uh, low, uh, climate resilience side, where we have four priority sectors, and of course, one of them is uh, related maybe on the uh, what is it uh, on the sea, uh, and then the, we have the low carbon development where. Um, it has five priority sectors, uh, and maybe you guys know it more on the mitigation side. So the five sectors are land base, and then waste management, and then the industry, green industry, and then also we have the blue carbon, including the mangrove. And then uh, the last one is um, uh, the agriculture uh, aspect. So uh, in regards, uh, we pl we put it as a national priority and hopefully that it is also adopted by the line ministries in their budgeting side. So it's prioritized in the budgeting side also. And uh, it is also adopted uh, by the city level or the provincial level side uh, as a as priority agenda in their RPGMD or their documents uh, for the uh, city side. Uh, and I would also emphasize that uh, we put it in the national midterm, but then there's COVID, right? And how we can cope this uh, COVID and build back better uh, with a green recovery matter. So we, we also um, uh, enhance the, 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 what is it, the policy for the, uh, tr the transformation of economy, which uh, there are several quick wins. And one of them is the green economy, where the low carbon development also plays a huge, uh, a huge uh, what is it, potential on it. And so uh, it's a very interesting discussing when we talk about investment, because uh, sometimes we, uh, the, the, what is it, the, the challenge on, uh, technology and infrastructure is about the, the financial aspect itself, uh, and I think it's uh, it's uh, we cannot really depend on grants and on consensual loan anymore. We have to uh, push and leverage investment in this in this case for a low carbon development uh, future. Uh, that, that's from my side. I think, Pananda. Thank you very much, Ibu Anggi. Uh, so I think you really uh, sort of uh, able to. Uh, also include uh, also sort of wrap discussion really well coming from the state development plan uh, and i think uh, we i agree that we need to uh, put our investment coming into the climate uh, crisis uh, uh, by a, a business approach uh, but uh, we need to also address the realities uh, coming from the regional governments such as in west Wales, where there is uh, still a lot of challenges and needs a lot of capacity building also how to build a proper business model uh, which is uh, something very important especially uh, there's something that already addressed also by Pak Darwin regarding that matter. Uh, but of course, uh, in order uh, to make this happen, the technology uh, uh, play a very important role, especially uh, uh, that is also including the technology related to the ocean and fisheries, which is will be highly, uh, which is sectors that is actually highly affected with the climate change. So I hope that uh, this can be uh, start of a very productive discussion in the future. Uh, hopefully, we can sort of uh, initiate a sort of initiative to help the uh, ocean and fishery sector in West Sulawesi to grow, maybe with the collaboration of all the stakeholders uh, involved in this discussion today. So, uh, I would like to say thank you very much uh, to everyone, uh, Lee, uh, Darwin, and Akaisa, and the colleagues from GFR, and also Ibu Angi for taking part in this discussion. Uh, I really appreciate uh, for your time. Uh, so we hope that uh, we can uh, uh, see a better effort uh, to the COP26 and we have a big project together uh, as a follow-up. So wishing you a very good day and hopefully to talk to you again very soon. So thank you very much again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.